Hi friends, welcome to the second week of my training vlog series. It's been quite a cold week for a bunch of us, so if you're somewhere with warmth and sunshine, please package some up, like maybe in a Ziploc bag and send it my way. I could use some warmth these days. Hey, speaking of warmth and sunshine, a big thank you to all the channel members. I really do appreciate your extra support of the channel. It really means a lot. All right, let's talk about last week's running. Monday was a rest day. Love my rest days. And then Tuesday, I did some easy running with some speed play, as my coach calls it. A storm had recently blown down many trees into the trail, which did kind of impair some of my relaxed speed I was trying to do. When I got home, I did my core strength exercises. And then after work, I did my yoga class over Zoom. On Wednesday, I did an easy road run. It was cold and wet, 36 degrees and raining. These kinds of slog runs are really good for practicing working through sucky conditions. It's not specifically mental training, but it definitely is mental training to just keep on going even when it's no fun. On Thursday, I did intervals. They were hard as usual. The last 30 seconds of the hard interval is especially difficult for me. afternoon I did my core strength workout I am getting more comfortable with this routine but damn I am getting so tired I was really feeling wiped out Thursday night so I had a bunch of food to try to get back my energy and just sort of bring life back to me because Leah and I were doing an all-day Saturday and Sunday wilderness first aid class I moved my long run to Friday it was a cold day for us in the Pacific Northwest it was 16 degrees Fahrenheit Oh man, it is so cold. That's cool. All right, well this bottle got frozen, which is a bummer. I don't think the, the bottle itself isn't frozen, but it's frozen up in the tube. So on this bottle, I've been trying to fight the problem by blowing out anything I drink, so the tube should be empty. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, I swapped my bottle tops. Mm. So now I can drink from the second bottle. All right. Hooey. On Saturday, I did an easy 35 minutes on the treadmill. It was very cold outside, and I just wanted something quick before we drove to Seattle for our wilderness first aid class. Then finally on Sunday, I was up early to get my run in before class. It was 16 degrees again, but I didn't want to run on the treadmill. On most of the run I ran, the sidewalks were ice covered, so I had to take it a little bit carefully. So that's it, another good week. I think for the most part, it went pretty well. I am feeling more tired than normal. I think it's just because I'm adding so much more workout to my workout with the core strength workouts and uh, increasing the the difficulty of the intervals and things so I'm gonna have to be focusing a lot more on my nutrition to make sure I'm getting enough calories through the week okay so let's get to the questions thank you to everybody who commented on my video last week I'm really excited that so many of you are excited about this series and so I'm gonna address a bunch of questions and then you know if you have more questions in the future definitely add them below and we'll, we'll address them in future um, future episodes all right, so Michael's asking me about my mental training that I do during the cycle. First off, Michael, thank you for being a channel member. Really appreciate your extra support of the channel. In general, I don't really do a lot of specific mental training during the week. I think that just my physical training alone is a lot of mental training. It takes a lot of grit to just get out there six days a week. Uh, so there's that. But then, of course, individual runs are often not a lot of fun. And so those are mental training just to push through the slog and, and get the thing done, even though I don't necessarily want to. 
But if you haven't seen my 2002 running road bushwhacking video, I would check that out. That really turned out to be an excellent mental training day for me. Uh, I was just really slogging through some rough conditions. Uh, but it was a great training day for me because even though I was I was really deep in it and I had no choice but to push forward. So um, every once in a while something like that comes along and becomes a really great training day for me. So I got a couple questions about my diet. You know, my nutrition story is probably among the least interesting <laughs> that I have. I don't really focus enough on nutrition to the level that I could or certainly that I sometimes wish that I did. I think that... Um, in a lot of ways, I'm just sort of a regular guy, and when it comes to eating, I'm definitely a regular guy. I don't focus enough on my nutrition to optimize it. A couple of years ago, I did work with a nutritionist, and I did kind of like that. I think I found it a little bit helpful. Um, I think I'd like to try it again um, with somebody different. I just haven't had a chance to, to do that yet. So um, I'm afraid I don't have a lot of interesting stories with my nutrition, but I think I'm becoming a bit more motivated uh, to try to think about this, so that might change over the months to come, uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, but in general, two nights before a big training run, I might remember to try to eat a bunch of carbs. That is something that I'll try to do. Uh, if I have a big Saturday run, Thursday night, I'll try to remember to load up for that. And then I am usually pretty good before a big event to make sure that in the week leading up, especially in the like the four or five days before the run, I'll start to really load up on carbs and then have one last big hurrah uh, two nights before. So, uh, yeah, so watch this space. We'll see if my nutrition improves over time. All right, who is my coach? I work with Coach Corinne Malcolm from Foothills Endurance. Uh, we started working together as I prepared for my first 50 miler in 2017, and she's really great. Uh, I'm a big fan of having a coach, so if, if your situation, you know, has room for that, I definitely recommend it. All right, so Haiburu's got three questions for us today. Um, how long is my training plan? Well, it's pretty much it's kind of ongoing. I There are builds of mileage and effort over a few weeks. You know, we kind of build, 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 and there's a step back week where there's a little bit of an easier training week. But to be honest with you, I don't really pay a lot of attention to the intricacies of the training schedule. I kind of leave that to my coach to, to generate the, the runs, and then I just do what I'm told. I just have so much going on in life that I, I kind of offload my mental energy for training to the coach, which is one of the reasons why I like having one so much. Um, I think some people have like a 16 week training plan as they get ready for Cocodona or a, a big event, but um, I'm pretty much always training for something. In terms of pace, I pretty much push hard on my interval days. Um, during an easy run, I might have a little bit less uh, effort than a regular run. I would say most, for the most part, I don't really pay attention to pace. I mostly pay attention to effort. So on easy, easy days, I'll have less than normal effort. On a long, long training day, I'll you know have a little bit higher effort level. Um, of course, intervals days, I have my interval or my effort level even higher. But because I'm only focusing on effort and not so much on pace, it is possible that an easy run day, especially if it's on the road, might have a faster pace than a more difficult or a higher effort training event. Um, so it's, for me, I mostly focus on effort. I don't really worry about pace. Uh, and then I under, do understand, I understand the math about how being lighter could make things easier, uh, but I really don't plan to lose weight. No, I'm, as my training progresses, I think I will naturally lean out a little bit, but I don't expect to lose 20 pounds. And in fact, I haven't even weighed myself in months. So um, not a real big area of emphasis for me. Um, kind of, I am the way I am and I'm able to complete these events this way and that works fine for me. This is a great question. How has my training changed? You know, I think probably the way that my training has changed the most over the last few years is I've probably given myself a little bit more grace to, uh, to maybe not get out on the trails if I'm having a rough day. There's, there are some mornings where I'm in a particular state where I'm sad or just not ready to go outside to see the world. And on some of those days, I might just stay in bed um, and just give myself a little bit of space to, to do whatever inside work I need to do. When I was starting out more, I think I was a bit more regimented and made sure that I did every single training uh, run, whether I wanted to or not. And that was really good training, especially for me mentally to 
to you know sort of get through all of this. So I think maybe over time, what I've learned is uh, with experience and confidence, I, I know where I can sort of give myself a little bit of leeway here and there. Mateo asks if I feel better with yoga. You know, I think I do. Yoga is really good exercise, and I feel good when I do it consistently. Uh, I was doing really great last year, and then I kind of fell off my routine. And so I'm trying to get back into it now. Uh, but I definitely feel more, I think I feel stronger, and I feel a bit more flexibility when I am able to regularly do the yoga. So uh, I want to keep on pushing that to get myself back to being comfortable doing it again. And I don't use kettlebells. I just don't know how to use them. So uh, I think for now I'm happy to do body weight exercises. And so uh, over time I might do more stuff. But right now the stuff I'm trying to do is challenging enough. And so um, I'm not trying to learn any new techniques at this point. And lastly, I got this. This is a great question. What inspired me to do this? And you know, obviously this is a big topic that we don't have time for in this video. But I will direct you to the awesome new Distance to Empty podcast. I was interviewed on the inaugural episode of that, and I, I think I had a pretty good answer to this question there. So uh, check out that podcast. And if you're looking for any of my other podcast interviews, I have links to all of them at westplate.com. Okay, wow, lots of questions. Thanks, everybody, for the comments and the questions this week. If you have any questions about my training or 200s in general, I guess uh, put them in the comments below, and maybe we can talk about that next week. Otherwise, everybody have a great week. I hope training is going well for you and I just hope a good week for you in general and uh, I'll see you next week.